This is John Isley from EliLogic.com. This is part two of our first lesson on creating a MIDI performance environment uh, in Logic for your Ely. And now we're going to explore the idea of filtering volume. If you've ever attached your Ely to Logic and you have volume turned on in the breath controller, you've probably noticed when you play a note that the fader for the channel that you have in record or that you're addressing will bounce up and down based upon how hard or how soft you blow, like this. So needless to say, this can be a problem because you're constantly readjusting the volume of the channel and this may not necessarily be what you want. Now one of the solutions to this would be to turn off the volume uh, controller uh, in your EWI, uh, in the breath sensor. But that doesn't make a lot of sense because the volume continuous controller number 7 is one of many outgoing MIDI signals that your EWI transmits that you can use to control uh, synthesizer, uh, soft synth, or other parameters inside of Logic, Reason, whatever your sound source is. So the solution to this, I'm just going to reset this back to Unity Gain. The solution to this is to create a widget or an object in the environment that will filter those continuous controller number seven messages uh, or volume messages out of the incoming MIDI stream while allowing everything else to pass through. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our environment. If you hold down your command key and you tap the number eight or go to window environment, it brings up our environment. And here we are back at our clicks and ports layer. And here's the object that we created originally, which was our little identifier. What I would like for you to do, however, is I would like for you to go to the mixer layer. So right here in the upper left-hand corner, just go to that drop-down and select mixer. And then what I would like for you to do is go to new, which is right here, and select new ornament. Now an ornament object doesn't really do much. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have any function other than to be a way of labeling inputs and outputs. It also can serve as a junction point for multiple inputs uh, to be uh, mixed down into a single output, or it could be a single input set to multiple destinations. So the input is always on the left, the output is always on the right. In this case, this is going to be our input for our macro object, so we are going to title this macro in. You can get the title box by command clicking on the name. I want to resize this down a little bit, make it a little bit smaller so it's a little easier to manage. Yeah, I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm also now going to create, I'm going to go back up here to my new menu and I am going to create a new fader and I'm going to create a button and here is my button. And then here in the definitions, I'm going to change this from button or as button to button 6. And as soon as you do that, you get this nice little on-off switch. If you click it, it turns it on, or the natural state is off. That's going to be our activator for activating our volume filter. Next thing that I'm going to create is I'm going to go back up to my new menu and I am going to create a new fader and special is going to be a cable switcher. So here's our cable switcher. Our cable switcher is a very special object in that it will allow you to set up multiple outputs and switch among them. And we can use this switch to switch between two possible positions, off and on, position 0, position 1. Now, the output of this fader is set to control on channel 1, number 7. The input, of course, is set to control on channel 1, number 7. I want to change these. I want to change this to meta. Channel 1, 7 is fine. 
I want to change this to meta as well so that this object will not react to any kind of incoming MIDI signal. The range for this object, set it to zero, must enter a space, and then one, and hit your return key. So we're going to attach this by grabbing the cable, and we're going to attach it to our cable switcher. I also like to colorize everything that I do so that I can see where they go. So I'm going to hold down my Option key. I've selected my fader. I'm going to hold down the Option key and tap on the C key. And it brings up my color palette. And I'm going to color this in red. So now, when I move away, I have a nice red cable that runs from my little button switch here into my cable switcher. If we go to our cable switcher, in order to have this switcher respond to our button, it has to be set to the same type of control. So its input must be set to meta channel 1, 7. Its output is a switch. That is correct. Channel 1 is fine. Number 48 is fine. So you would think that by clicking on this, we would see this react. Well, it doesn't. Oh, one more thing that we need to do. We only need two positions on our cable switcher. Right now, there are 128 possible positions. So what I would like to do is I want to change this again to 0, space, 1, and hit your return key. So now there are only two possible positions for this cable switcher. It will be off or on. But this is having no effect. The reason this is having no effect is because there is no destination for our cable switcher. So, we're going to create another ornament. And we are going to call this ornament through. Command click on the name, and I'm going to type in through. And I'm going to attach the first output of my cable switcher to this through ornament. And notice as soon as I do that, I get a second output that pops up. I'm going to go back to my new menu, and I'm going to create a transformer. A transformer is an extraordinarily powerful tool. It allows you to transform the MIDI that's coming through this object and to manipulate it in fairly limitless ways. I'm going to connect my second output to whoops, connect my second output to my transformer. And notice as soon as I connect that second output, I get yet a third output. It's not important. We're not going to use it. But as you add new objects to this output, you will continue to get more output points listed below this. I'm going to command click on our transformer, and I'm going to label it kill volume kill vol. You should get into the habit of labeling everything that you do because once you start working with large numbers of objects it's very important that you have an idea of what is going where and why. That's also why I like to color code everything so I can see. And speaking of, I'm going to attach my input macro and I'm going to color code that in green. I generally color all of my inputs to their first destination in green. We're going to color our cable switcher, just to get into the habit. We'll color this in, say, orange. So now you see that those output cables coming from our cable switcher are orange. And I'm going to create one more ornament, and this will be our macro out. Put that right down here, and I'm going to label that macro out. And then I'm going to attach the through output and the volume output, or the kill volume transformer, to the macro out. Now, ornaments that are labeled macro in and macro out are special objects. What this tells logic, when you decide to pack this into a macro, and a macro is a single object that contains all of these other objects, when you decide to pack these into one object, it will treat 
this ornament labeled macro n, or any object for that matter labeled macro n, as the first object in the signal path. And it will treat the macro out as the last object in the signal path, therefore maintaining your series of inputs and outputs. It's a good habit to get into to use those. It makes designing macros very, very easy. Now, some people argue that this through ornament is unnecessary, and in many ways it is unnecessary. It is merely a placeholder. I like to use these when I'm doing creating smaller objects like this because it gives me a very visual reference as to where this signal path is leading to. So I know that position zero on my switcher is leading me to the through position, whereas position two, and notice if I click on my switcher, it now allows me to switch to position two, is for the kill volume transformer. Now, because we have two outputs, if I click on my switch, notice that it is switching back and forth between the zero position and the one position, which is off, which means through, which means nothing is going to happen to my signal, and position one, which is then sending the signal through this transformer to the macro out. Now, the last step in our process is to actually transform the MIDI information and to remove the continuous controller number seven volume data from the MIDI path. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on our transformer and that opens up this transformer box. This is the definition window that allows you to define what's happening with this transformer. We're going to set our mode to filter matching events. Very simply, what that means is, is that anything that comes into this transformer that matches the description that we're about to get it, or about to give to it, will be filtered out of the MIDI path and everything else will be sent through. So our status will equal control because we're going to be filtering a continuous controller. We want this to affect all incoming channels, not just a specific channel. Data byte 1 equals 7. That is saying that we are going to eliminate controller number 7. We'll leave data byte 2 set to all. And once you've set this, we're now ready to filter our line information.